What? Yeah? What about my chair? It squeaks. Yeah, I know it squeaks. It's off-putting. Okay. Look, all right, I'll oil it. Okay. What? Why do I want a paint rack? Because it... Why? Why will it make me look more professional? I don't have the space for that. I can, where can I put a paint rack in here? I should find... No. No. Doesn't it matter what I say and what I show people and not what I have behind me? People care. <laughs> Nobody cares what I think. No, I'm not getting one. No, no, I'm not getting one. Okay. No, I've not made the one. Well, I could try and do it later. Maybe. Look, I've got to go. I've got work to do. There's people coming. There are, I've got friends. Look, I've got to go. Yeah? Okay. All right. No, I'm not getting a paint rack. Okay, look, I've got to go. All right. Yeah, see you later. Thanks, bye. to the shed I hope you're well this is a quick demonstration for those who struggle with the idea of painting small parts a lot of beginners paint their pieces whilst they're still attached to the runners now that's fine we all do that I certainly do that I know that Brett Green is a big advocate of that kind of technique but what it causes is once you take the parts away from the sprues you've obviously got the marks left from the removal you've already painted the pieces, then you end up having to touch up everything. So, how do you go about holding those parts in a really simple way so that you can paint them, whether you're painting them with an airbrush or whether you're painting them with a traditional paintbrush? Well, I'm gonna show you. What you need for this are a number of things that you can see set out by the side of me. I have some um, wooden coffee stirrers here that I borrowed from a well-known coffee chain, <coughs> Costa. <coughs> now these are really useful, um, they're perfect for stirring paint but they're also perfect for holding small pieces. So we have coffee stirrers. I have a piece of card, this is a small rectangle of mount board, I buy this in big sheets, I use it for creating bases for aircraft. So piece of mount board, I have some cocktail sticks. Now these are um, probably the most useful thing that I have around the workshop. I use these to hold virtually everything. Um, all small parts, I also use them for creating scratches and that kind of thing. They're really worth having around. Get yourself some. And we have some blue tack and we have some white tack. Now I don't know the difference between these except one seems slightly what? One softer and stickier. What? The white one is softer and stickier. Okay. Okay the white one is softer and stickier than the blue one. Either will be perfect for this really. Okay, so we have card, we have our sticks, we have cocktail sticks, and we have our 
blue sack and white sack. The final thing that we can use is some masking tape. I use, to me, a masking tape. Any masking tape will do, so long as it holds. If you have masking tape around that's really low tack, it probably isn't going to be too good for this. This is Tamir's uh, masking tape, but this is produced by Frog. You can buy this in local hardware shops. It does exactly the same thing. So whichever you've got around, you can use. Those are the basics for what I'm going to show you. This will take two minutes, nice and easy. It's really aimed at the beginner, but I'm sure that anybody that's looking for some simple ideas and simple ways to hold small pieces or larger sub-assemblies actually, you, it doesn't need to be single parts, will find this a useful little demonstration. Let's get started then. Okay, the first way to hold some small pieces is to take one of our wooden coffee stirrers like this, take some white tack, roll up little balls and then carefully stick them at regular intervals down the stirrer, just like that. Then all you do is you simply press the piece into it, into each blob and as you can see it holds nice and firmly and you now have a perfect handle from which you can paint your pieces. Take a paintbrush as you can see you can get into there and you can paint it. Then once you've painted this side all you do is you just turn it over put the part back on the other side Obviously, you've got to leave the paint to dry. Just like that. And then you can paint the other side. Nice and easy. So, that's a simple way of doing things. Another way is to take our piece of mount board and then take a length of masking tape Roll the masking tape up like that and then apply it to the mount board. You can use two or three pieces if you want, depending on the number of parts that you're hoping to paint. Then all you do is you lay the parts down onto the curved tape and once again you can paint them in place. All you do once you've finished is you simply swap them over. The tape's so cheap that you can just take the tape off, roll another section and then start one, start all over again. Now the cocktail sticks are obviously a really useful addition to the workshop and they can be used on smaller items Take a cocktail stick. Lots of parts that you'll use will have conveniently moulded holes in them, usually to mount other sections. This here is the belly plate for a Messerschmitt 109. This holds the drop tank and in the middle of it is a small hole. So all you do is you just push the cocktail stick through the hole until it resists and there you go. You have a handle from which you can paint the part. You can use this to paint it by brush. You can also use this to airbrush the part. Then once it's dry, you simply take the piece away, fit it to the model, nice and easy. This is another piece, this is slightly larger, but you can see that there are holes that are molded all the way along this. Find a convenient one, push the cocktail stick through it until it resists, and there you go. And you can, this part can be held in place through all of the painting steps, whether it's the, the base coats or the weathering stages or applying the details. Once you finish painting it, simply take it off, glue it onto the model. 
You can also use these cocktail sticks as well for holding single parts individually rather than using the longer coffee stirrer that we used earlier. This is a, a, um, a wheel cover from the same Messerschmitt 109. All I would do is I would press the part against the white tack and there you go. Nice and easy. Perfect handhold for this piece to be painted. And finally you can wrap these as well in tape and in a similar way to using white tack or blue tack, if you don't have any white tack or blue tack, you can use tape. All we do there is to put a piece of tape around this and then wrap it around the coffee stirrer. Just like that. Rip the end off. So now you have coffee stirrer that's wrapped in sticky tape. Press the part into the tape. And as you can see, that holds in place. Away you go, paint the parts, finish them off. These ideas and these little steps are just simple guides to help you get away from the idea that you have to paint everything while it's still on the runners. You don't have to do that. Remove the pieces, mount them on little handles, cocktail sticks, wooden handles like this, um, paint them away from the model and that way you're not painting each of the individual pieces twice. If you paint them on the runners and get them all looking great then you remove them, you're always going to have to clean up those those marks from the removal. What do you end up doing then? You either end up ruining the original finish or you end up having to paint the whole part all over again. Much better to have pieces off the sprues, cleaned up, painted all in one go. So there you are, nice quick video, hopefully showing you some simple ideas that will help you hold smaller pieces, whether you're painting them with a brush or whether you're spraying them with an airbrush. I really hope you enjoyed this, hope you got something from it, and I hope you try out some of these ideas. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about this, please check out my blog, you'll find the address in the comments box that I think that I've that I've created um, for this channel. Give that a look over and um, you'll find a whole bunch of other stuff on there as well that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Now if you don't mind I'm gonna go and find out who that guy was that gave me all the information about the blue tape. Hey! Hey! Hold on! Wait! Don't you run off!